information super easily because that's really like without information in the trove, it's fairly useless. So we have yeah. to make it super easy. One of the ways is through uh, through the Trove mobile application. My this, my assets inside of the of the application are you know uh, easily viewable, uh, and all the information in here is either added uh, directly by uh, by myself or we can. Um, we can use the add button, <clears throat> and I take a picture of any uh, any item. Take a picture of supporting information like a receipt or a box or QR code. VR, uh, now, is this uh, uh, iPhone only or iPhone and Android? Today, it's iPhone only. Seventy okay. percent of our users, our target audience, uses iPhone today, and Android will be out in the first quarter, uh, 2014. Cool. Sorry. And so, uh, if you're the rich guy, and you're a rich guy, uh, you have a yeah. team that has uh, that has Trove on their system. Well, so, so, so if I'm your financial manager or your art manager, I'm going to go around your collection and take pictures. With yeah, my, so with my, I, if my family office manager might go around, if I had one, might go around and do it myself. It's more likely they're going to hire one of uh, one of our partners, the Trove partners, the appraisal partners. Who would go into the home and, and spend uh, roughly eight hours or so to collect all, collect all the information about the things that you own for the benefit of better insurance and, and more complete, tangible wealth management? Okay. Let me show you some of the information where that gets more interesting. So, all this information is on my. Uh, so, on this my is like a, jewel, uh, a piece jewelry. Of jewelry. Right, sure. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I can do a number of things with this. Probably the most interesting, though, is of course I can share this, and we want, you know, some people. It's interesting to us that many of the folks who are, particularly the folks who are becoming more wealthy as they're the younger generation, the sort of born digital folks, they love to share information about what they're acquiring. You know, I've completed my collection of a particular kind of art. They'll like to share it with their friends. Yeah. But maybe more interesting are these three buttons down at the bottom that, that, that indicate kind of the complete path of Trove, which is once I have information and all, all uh, updated information about the things that I own in my Trove, then I can do things like insure it now, so insure on demand. I can borrow against it and uh, I can sell it now and there'll be other occasions for me to benefit from that information with partners. So yeah. our biggest innovations are help you collect, keep it actively valued, and then connect you and your information to a broad ecosystem of partners who are willing to give you advantages because of the information in your trove. Two examples. This Ensure Now button allows me to say, okay, I'm going to send this to my broker of record. Today, the insurance world lives, and for 150 years, they've lived on a single ratio called insurance to value. The ITV ratio is the core of their business. Yeah. And for those same 150 years, the value part of that equation has been opaque. They've been making wild guesses about what is inside of the structure that we're insuring. They are usually just say, well, it's 50 yeah. or 60% of the values, whatever. With Trove, for the first time ever, we are giving transparency to the PNC insurer on the changing values of the items they're insuring. Yeah. And we do that at point of sale when, we, when people add new things to their Trove, and we're doing it by, by, uh, by watching the events that affect the value of the items they insure. Yeah. And they get alerts, so the I, the we should talk about that, right? Yeah. If you own some Chinese art right now, that, I'm I, I'm a big uh, I love watching uh, antiques roadshow. In fact, oh, one do? of my one of my fr friends' uh, dads is uh, is uh, an appraiser on the show. Yeah, um, and Chinese They're art. They're big friends of ours, by the way. Yeah, that whole Alistair Ch is a, yeah, Chinese art right now is getting very expensive because the Chinese market's getting wealthy and they want to buy all their art back sure. that we bought. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so the values are going up. If you have a lot of Chinese art, you you should change how you insure that, right? You bet. You change how in, you insure it. In just a decade, you could have had some of those paintings have gone oh, up. We got some four times. There. Value, Amazing right? stories. Check this story. This is a bit of an anomaly, but it, it really adds. You know, clarity to kind of what we're doing. About seven weeks ago now, we had a client come to us in, uh, in from Washington. And uh, they had inherited 53 pieces of art in, in the 80s. They'd insured it for a few million dollars, included, you know, interesting artwork and pieces and such. When we passed our services through, we did the full trove and we passed our services, the retail replacement value was over half a billion dollars. Wow. So you think, well, that's great for them because now they know that they have all this you know, tangible wealth and they have what have you. But if you think about what that set up over the four, over those three or four decades where they were underinsured, they had four kind of risks. They had 
uh, obviously they had risk to um, uh, the value, so they had loss, right? They could have, if, if there had been a, a significant fire. loss, right, there would have been a significant loss of fire, fire. There, right? They have tremendous exposure for their assets. The second thing is a state uh, tax risk. Had one of them or both of them passed away during that period of time and they hadn't appropriately valued, which they hadn't appropriately valued, the estate would have been stuck with an enormous tax bill, which uh, you know they probably would have to sold many, if not all, the items. Uh, the third thing is what I call a li liquidity option risk. So if they had known during those 30 or 40 years that they had valuable items in their, if you would, trove, then they would have made different decisions about how they managed liquidity, right? Their, their, estate, their estate planner, their wealth manager would have said, maybe instead of selling Baidu, you might sell your uh, Maxfield Parish art collection because it's increased by 14 you know, percent, 30 or 50 percent. And then fi finally, there's the sort of a new wealth effect. The new wealth effect is if I am managing tangible wealth more actively, much more like I'm managing financial wealth, then perhaps there's a more reason for me to be more liberal with the way that I spend or make decisions about the way that I spend. Yeah. So those four things set themselves up during that period of time, not just their asset exposures, right? So wow. we're, seeing, we're seeing two places where Trove is having the greatest impact today. It's in the PNC insurance where we're, we are uh, giving new transparency to the values of the things that they own, of the things that they're insuring, excuse me, and we're completing the picture of wealth. So yeah. the first time ever, wealth managers can say, not only am I managing, actively managing your portfolio of financial instruments, I'm also actively managing your tangible wealth. Does that make sense? Yep. Now this makes sense for rich people, right? <laughs> you know? yeah. And unfortunately, I'm not rich. <laughs> so I don't have a nice art collection. I don't have to keep track of too much of my life. Um, what's the long-term impact to this for normal people? Is, is this going to come out of the rich community it, and, absolutely. and be something that I want on my iPhone? Yeah, sure. I mean, because there's a whole bunch of benefits to be had. So we talk about insurance and, and managing your stuff. It's true for insurance even for any of us that, you know, uh, there's one company advertising, why are you insuring your dad's stuff. You don't have the same stuff. You've got the iPod, you know, you've got a Google Glass, right? Yeah. It's totally different. And if we actually knew what you owned, it would be a whole different ball game. Instead of guessing and paying for the average insurance or the last generation's insurance, you could actually insure what you have and be you know, better covered. So that applies to everyone. Um, and then all of us, you know, this is something I learned from the whole life logging experiment, is we all get great benefit from having this information. The friction is just reduced on any transaction. Tell me what, because it, I, I, I talk about that with Google Glass, and people look at me like I'm crazy. So what do you mean by yeah. lower friction and that we get a benefit from having a database? Right, no, you're not crazy. So I mean, and listen, <laughs> any of us, uh, my furnace broke down. Well, who was the guy who serviced it last time? How long ago, gee, it seems like it wasn't that long ago. Shouldn't he be doing this for free? You know, where's that, do you have that information quick? And, and some of it becomes obscure. You never know what you might save that turns out to be valuable. I, I had a home I had to sell. Uh oh, there's problems with the tile. Where do we get that tile from? Can we replace it in a hurry? Well, I would have been stuck except for I have all that information. I had kind of the trove of my home because I was this crazy life logging guy. And I had all the documents to do with my home attached to my home. Boom, I had that, we had it fixed and the sale closed. And you know, so there's all kinds of utility that you get. And so this comes whether you're doing maintenance or you have full records, whether you're buying or selling things. You know, even if you're not a multi-billionaire, you still might have a $5,000 painting. And when you go to sell it, you need all the provenance information about it. And you want to have all the records, you know, where did I buy it and what, because that's all part of what you hand over. Yeah, right. So that's the utility value, if you don't mind me stepping in. The, yep. There's another interesting story we like to tell, and it's this. So Jim Nordstrom joined our, our uh, advisory board. Uh, uh, Nordstrom. Uh, Nordstrom, right, former co-president, right, he's the. Yep. And he joined basically because of this conversation. I said, Jim, imagine one of your customers walks into your store and he or she is carrying an enormous box. And they take that box, they set it down on the retail counter and they invite two or three of your clerks over and they open up the box and they start to pull out photographs, stories, purchase information about the stuff that they own yep. that's similar to the things that are in your store. And they begin to tell that they, that the customer begins to talk about the things that they own. And it's not just what they bought at Nordstrom. 
but it's what they bought at Saks Fifth Avenue and at Neiman Marcus and at the, at the boutique. No. I said, how does that change? How would that change your fundamental relationship with your customer? And he said, our number one goal is to serve our customers better. 